Good morning and welcome to worship. Let us take a moment of silence to prepare ourselves for worship, to center ourselves in God's love and amazing grace. Even though we are in ordinary times, we light the Christ candle, reminding us that God lights the way through Christ always. A prayer for our nation. Holy Trinity, one God, you show us the splendor of diversity and the beauty of unity in your own divine light. Make us who came from many nations with many languages, a united people that delights in our many different gifts. Defend our liberties and give those whom we have entrusted with authority the spirit of wisdom, that there might be justice and peace in our land. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and our Savior. Amen. Confession and Forgiveness Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Jesus Christ, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be a beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen.
Our first lesson is from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verse 1 through 5 and 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is number 62, verses 5 through 12. For God alone my soul awaits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. Oh, on God rests my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. But no confidence in extortion. And set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken... Twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God, and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. Our second lesson is from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord according to Mark chapter 1, verse 14 through 20. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John who were in their boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you. By grace alone, you call us to be disciples. Fill us with your spirit and give us strength through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen.
as we continue through the time after Epiphany, stories of the call to discipleship show us the implications of our baptismal calling to show Christ to the world in all that we say and we do. To stand up for justice, to show mercy and love and kindness to one another. Jesus begins proclaiming the good news and calling people to repent right after John the Baptist is arrested for preaching in a similar way. He does not let this event stop him. Knowing that John was later executed, we see the consequences and the cost of discipleship. Yet the two sets of brothers leave everything they have known and worked for all their lives to follow Jesus and fish for people. What kind of faith must they have had? God give us the strength to have similar faith. God show us the way. In the reading from Jonah today, the word of the Lord does not come just once, but a second time. And I would say the word of God comes continually, showing us what is ours to do. God does not leave Jonah or the Ninevites alone, but keeps calling them until God's will is done. In Jonah 3, 4, we hear the shortest sermon ever told, just eight words. Forty days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Even though Jonah does not tell the Ninevites all what God told him to say, the Ninevites do hear the word of God, believe in God and turn from their evil ways. Sometimes it takes just a word or an act of kindness for people to turn from their evil ways. Sometimes it just takes being listened to. Even though our world is being shaken, our sense of normalcy disrupted, God does not leave us on our own. God is with us. God alone and nothing else is our rock and our salvation. On God rest our deliverance. When we feel as though we cannot take one more thing, one more COVID restriction, one more riot, one more act of hatred, what? are we to do? We turn to the Lord, for God is our refuge. We are told this in scripture. Do not set your hearts on things of this world, but instead set your hearts on the Lord. We must trust that the one who has called us into this present moment will also sustain us and lead us through it. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus calls the first disciples, and in our baptism, we are called as well. Martin Luther states, we are priesthood of all believers. We are all called to follow Jesus. Even the youngest among us is called. On Wednesday morning, I had the privilege to listen to Amanda Gorman, the youngest to read a poem at the inauguration of President Biden and Vice President Harris. And I was memorized. Such wisdom from a 22-year-old written in the words of her poem, The Hill We Climb. Words and wisdom that include it. We will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. 
There is always a light. If only we're brave enough to see it. If only we are brave enough to be it. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine, but that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect, she said. We are striving to forge a, a union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gaze, not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first, we must first put our differences aside. Such wisdom. Amanda Gorman embraced her gift that God has given her. Her gift of poetry and discipleship was embodied. And I hope has inspired each of us to let our lights shine. How will we embrace our discipleship and have the courage to say yes where God is calling us to? Not all have been called to seminary or to teach faith formation or Bible study. Some have been called to ministries of hospitality, caregiving, prison ministry, or IT work. Some are called to stay at home and pray, while others are called to maintain buildings and grounds. But make no mistake, as baptized Christians, we are all called, young and old, to be disciples of Christ. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, we will be shown the way. We are entrusted with responsibilities in our baptism to live among God's faithful people, to read God's word and participate in the Holy Meal. And we are to know and to live by the Lord's Prayer, the Creed and the Ten Commandments. We are to nurture our faith and prayer life. We are to trust God and proclaim Christ through word and deed are to care for others and the world God made. And we are to always work for justice and peace. This is what we are entrusted to as baptized disciples of Christ. Sustained by the Holy Spirit, we will be given the strength and wisdom to live out what God has entrusted to us. Jesus sees the potential in all of us to be disciples and be transformed by God's love. Even when, especially when, the world seems to be crashing down around us. The world needs each and every one of us, young and old, to use the gifts that we have been given to embody Christ in the world. God does not leave us alone in this mission, but accompanies us, is our rock, is our salvation, is our hope, and I say thanks be to God. Go, answer your call. Follow Christ. Amen. Shine with the giant the
Our worship continues with professing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. Each prayer will end. Let us pray, and our response is, Have mercy, O God. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconess, for musicians and readers, for children and adults, that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water and for the well-being of all creation, that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those who provide leadership in our townships, cities, nation, and around the world, especially newly elected President Biden and Vice President Harris. For nonprofit and non-governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates that God inspire all people in the just use of wealth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, for the outcast and all who await relief, that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For our congregation, visitors, and community, for families, big and small, and for the AA and Al-Anon groups that meet here weekly, that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. And thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith whose lives serve as an example of gospel living that they point us to salvation through Christ. 
let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken and unspoken, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always and also with you. A sacramental prayer until we can meet again as the whole body of Christ break the one bread and share the one cup. I invite us to pray this prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life that nourishes and sustains us. Since we cannot gather to share the bread and cup, dwell in our hearts and reveal to us again that we are the body of Christ in our vulnerable flesh through our baptism into your death and resurrection and in service to the world you love. Be for us manna in the wilderness. Open our eyes to see you present in every meal and in all who hunger for bread, for human touch, for justice and mercy, and for healing and hope. We pray in your holy name, our healer and our companion. Amen. Gathered into one, with the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. May God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace, be the light of Christ in the world. Thanks be to God.